All right, here we go. Round of four. Nightmare versus Dark. A couple Koreans going at it. Obviously a bit of a difference in the level. We got Nightmare in the bottom left of Alcyon. And we have Dark in the top right. Uh, you know, I obviously Dark is favored here. I did like the pressure that we saw Nightmare putting sort of under earlier, but Dark is a completely different beast. I guess what we're going to be looking at is how uh, Nightmare's timings compare when Dark is playing instead of sort of, because that'll be kind of the interesting thing for anyone who's been watching. Like how much how much sharper is Dark, right? When does he get that that fourth base? Because that was really the issue that we saw earlier. Ugh. Hero Max Pack's such a better series. Well, bro, I'm sure someone else is casting that. So you can go and go and take a look at that. Such a better series. Oh my god. That PvP. The Blink Stalkers. They're going to be blinking. It's going to be so great. Yes. Go ahead. Max Pax can't even qualify for GSL, bro. We got a multiple time GSL champ here. All right. Well, uh, we got to wait for the Cybernetic score, obviously. Do you think it's cool that you can see the drone swimming around inside the building it's making? Can Dark win the Copenhagen Open? Yeah, yeah, he could. Max Pax couldn't, though, because he won't show up. So, I don't know what we're talking about here, guy in the chat. Uh, So, yeah, there's the Stargate. That's what we were looking for. Now, what is Nightmare going to be going for? I did like his Void Ray that he utilized to set up some of the uh, the Adept pressure from the previous series we saw from him. That would be wild if Max Pax is, a, is an AI. It's actually what we'll find out is that Max Pax is... Uh, <laughs> he's, he's the Deep Mine Alpha Star. No, we would have picked that up in the uh, APM and the, the hotkey usage. All right, so this for first Oracle coming out. I mean, it's hard to imagine it doing damage. I feel like we're already seeing like a little bit more pulled back version of Nightmare here. We don't see him really roaming the map at all. We don't see the same type of confidence, which he had against... Uh, which he had against sort of. You know, that is an issue. That's a that's a big thing is confidence. Uh, I think yeah, everyone learns that eventually that just like confidence in general is one of the biggest determinants of how a game is going to be played out, any sort of uh, competitive pursuit. And if you have more confidence, even if you shouldn't, you're going to play better. It's like you can't be, if you play afraid, you're definitely going to lose. So you may as well play brave, right? All right, that's reasonable. That's really reasonable what we just saw there. I like getting the the uh, uh, larva as well. Larva kills are underrated. Is he just going to sit with that stalker outside again? Is that just what he does? He just keeps the stalker outside? All 
All right, Robo coming up, as well as that Forge. Oh, a second Stargate. Oh, my God. I don't know how I didn't notice that. Okay, so second Stargate. This should turn into Void Rays plus Disruptors. Uh, so this is going to be a very old style. Now, I mean, Nightmare's been around for a while, so he definitely was active during this time. Uh, but Void Ray Disruptor is reasonable. It, well, it was reasonable. It's not really a thing anymore. Like, much better builds came out. But against Dark specifically, I feel like this could be a really, a really interesting way to go about it, honestly. So, what it is, is the Void Rays beat everything, except for the things that beat them get beaten by Disruptors, right? So, it's like, let's say that you have Mass Hydras or Mass Queens. Well, you just blow them with, up with Disruptors. And then the Void Rays literally beat everything else Zerk has. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's weird. I want to see more. Yeah, you better keep making Voids. Like, it doesn't make sense to stop, I think. Well, he shows two, and he's only making one more right now. Okay, there's the second. Okay. Because I feel like if you're going to do this, then do it. Like, make the Voids. Make it dangerous. There's interesting things you can do with the Voids, too. Like, if you get you know speed and you run around you can maybe snipe a hatch that's being made something like that run in kill a gas on the side of a base that type of move right this is cool this is fun hey you know what though you know what i bet i bet that the blink stalkers that hero and max packs are using right now is a way better match than someone doing a build that you never see it's probably way better you know what i might just turn the stream off Maybe that's the best way to go about it. I don't want you guys to watch something like something interesting like this where people are using really anachronistic builds against each other. Now, notice that Hydras are being made because he sees a bunch of voids. So it's like, okay, well, I need to have some decent DPS against that. Let's go Hydra. And that's why you have the Disruptors being made. Now, to be fair, you can't really attack with this comp. This is one of the reasons why we don't really see it anymore. Uh, and he's going to go Phoenixes now. Okay, so... You can actually go mass Phoenix and kind of beat up on uh, on Hydras. <laughs> this is so silly. You'd have to make so many of them, though. And at this point in the game, it doesn't make sense. And he goes back into voids. What am I looking at? Dude, what is this? Okay, a little counterattack coming down, and he is going to be able to force cancel on this base. Even if the voids can punish somewhat. Definitely worth. A lot more drones coming up for Dark. Wouldn't be surprised if Dark goes up to 100 drones, honestly. this When you're seeing this type of comp, you just know they can't put together an attack. It's just like, what are you going to attack with? It's like 10 void rays, 3 disruptors, 8 zealots without speed, and a stalker. It's like, well, that's not an army. <laughs> that's a, that's one of the funny things that happens sometimes in PvZ, where you have this army where it's like, okay, I can't be killed. And then you look at it and you're like, I can't do anything with this either. And normally it's it's flying unit disruptors oftentimes what that is, whether it's like phoenixes into disruptor or something like that. We've seen it so many times as well. So some Static D going down at that fourth base. Fleet Beacon is coming up. Storm on the way. Charge on the way. Now Dark coming down towards this fourth. Where's our units at? Got to get these in position. Oh, Disruptors, where the hell are you going? Get down there. Yeah, totally, totally fine. Oh, Sag. Well, that's not how that was supposed to go. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, the attack coming in here once again, he is going to be able to hold that pretty easily. Looks like a disruptor did come up to clear this. And obviously, as you can see, this defensively, he's completely fine. But these are small attacks from Dark. These are not like... We're not looking at these and saying like, wow, Dark really spent a ton of units there. He didn't. You know, he's expanding a bit more. He's getting more creep spread. Trying to get these gold minerals taken. Really, over on the side here of Nightmare, I think it's probably time to go Carrier, honestly. Maybe there's a world where you can go Ground Unit. Okay, he's making a couple Archons. He does have Psy Storm. Now, if he tries to go Ground Units here, 
The funny thing is there's a lurker dead on the way. So it's a, that's never bad for dark. It's not like he needs more anti-air. The lurker den will shore him up against all sorts of things. But like if your opponent goes lurker den here, it's not like you can go attack. Like disruptors can technically kill some, but it's, you know, it's not like you just go disruptors and kill Zerg because they went lurkers. So decent micro here from dark. It's a very good overcharge. Really surprised he kept an Archon alive there. Really looked like Dark was going to get both the picks. Good army split here as well. Okay, Carrier's on the way. Blink. We got plus three attack coming in. So we're getting ourselves a real big macro game. Right, trying to attack this gold nexus now. Ooh, almost, almost gets a sick disruptor shot. Not quite though. He's gonna be able to hold this very, very easily. So that's gonna be five base against five base. Dark definitely needs to take like the top left bases, I would say at this point. I don't think that we have a lot of mobility here from Nightmare. He can send charge lots around and whatnot, but that's about it. He's mostly still on a defensive composition. So I really want to see Dark take those extra bases, split them across. In fact, take the both the top left bases and take that very right base as well. And if you take all those, like, I don't think that you can really clear everything as, as Nightmare here. Now he does have, oh, yeah, okay. Does have uh, a couple Vipers in there. So he's going to go ahead, throw down a Parasitic Bomb. Just pulling that Void Ray out for now. All right, little link counterattack coming in. I like it. There's not a lot here to stop that. I think it is time for a Dark Shrine, by the way. I think at this point in the game, you definitely want to get the Dark Shrine because sometimes you can do something like warp in two DTs here and just clear shit really fast. Obviously, you can make some uh, some Zealots and, and do it like this, but Dark Shrine is very useful in the late game. Very worth. More carriers being made. Additional Hydralisk upgrades on the way. Haven't really seen infestors yet, but probably something he wants to think about. And another base actually being taken first by Nightmare, which is kind of shocking. Pretty surprised about that. Now he tries to attack in. This is a wonky, wonky army. Great feedbacks. My God, those feedbacks are insane. This is, this is kind of crazy. Now he's running out of interceptors, but he has no ground army, right? Like he doesn't have real tanking going on. So this is a big part of the issue of what's, what's happening in this battle. So even though he had like a big punch, as far as splash damage plus some flying units, it's like he just kind of ran out of stuff. And again, not a real attacking composition as you can see. It's like you wanna you wanna grind stuff down as they attack into you with that type of army. Now, now that he's lost a chunk of it, he can actually start remaxing uh, with the correct units here, so that attacks become more possible. Let's get plasma shields. Get plus one air. Mixing some archons in. The spire just now getting started, by the way. Damn, lurker's going crazy on those rocks. See someone saying Protoss Mech style. I want to try this. Yeah, it kind of, kind of is, kind of is. With the opener, at least. Obviously, it turns into Sky Toss. But yeah, again, an older strat. Uh, but yeah, Nightmare putting good use to it. And honestly, like, I mean, I think he's putting out a great game here. Great game overall. He definitely needs a bit more splash damage here, right? So what we see here is. The interceptors are being gunned down pretty quickly. There's just not the critical mass of carriers. And then he has all of these lurkers that are preventing any of the ground army from really doing very much. So that's something that needs to be fixed here. You know, whether we're going to have more Psy Storms, we're going to start throwing out more disruptor shots, obviously raise that carrier count as well. Hey, Starcon gifting some subs. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. 
Hope that you're having a, a merry, merry Christmas right now. Now, Zealots come into both sides. Obviously, you can't have them fight near those Lurkers. Well, unless the Lurkers are tagged and trying to run away. Zealots coming up to try to dissolve those Zealots before they uh, get out of here. Go towards that top left. I'm still kind of shocked that Dark has only taken one additional base during all of this. Really, I, I felt like four or five minutes ago he should have taken top left. Now, there are Zealots up there, but uh, there was nothing there until this moment. It's kind of, it's really turning into a very interesting game. Now, that being said, I wish that we had just chosen to do the PvP, which is probably over already, because that would have been a way better match. But, uh, like, right now, Dark is committing so heavily to Hydralisk, which is going to give him some mobility, going to help him to fight ground a bit better. Obviously, he has great upgrades on them as well, right? And, well, with some yoinks, that's, that's some pretty big kills going down. That's some pretty damn big kills. Do you consider switching your comp up a little bit here as Nightmare? I think one of the issues that we're seeing here... Excuse me. One of the issues that we're seeing here is he doesn't have enough splash around... Uh, and it's not Archons that you want. You want Archons specifically when there's Corruptors. Here, you're just going to want more Psy Storm, honestly. Disruptors aren't bad, but uh, really Psy Storm is going to be what clears out these Hydras correctly. Like, okay, he's going to yoink carriers, but Psy Storm is shit out of everything. So he has a lot of High Templars there now. And it's okay to have a few Archons if, like, you have a big gas bank. Just get, get stuff to tank. But there you go. We need those Psy Storms going down. Uh, now, unfortunately, we just don't really have the carriers. We don't have anything with range here to support. So it's literally these Archons that are terrible against these units trying to fight. All right. Really very, very good Disruptor hit, but that attack is doing some good damage. Both sides very broke right now <laughs> and without a lot of supply. We're getting pretty darn low at this point. Does seem as if Dark is, is really breaking through ever since killing off all those carriers. Ooh, very, very good clean. Now, he needs to heal those. All four of those are super, super low at the moment. Does seem like he's staying more heavily on gr a ground army. Now, Dark is barely mining minerals. Like, he's got this gold base, and then he's got, like, that ripe one. See, very few drones here. And that's the one really good base that he's got going on right now. So, the economy of Dark is not super great, but, it, you know, I'd be worried for him if Nightmare had one more base. As is, he's mining off one and a half bases. So, you know, the, the, the two-ish from Dark is going to be enough here. You can see it reflected that production tab very, very well. Yeah, this is probably not going to go so well. He does have some roaches mixed in there as well. Good storms. Getting low, though. Yeah. <laughs> Sends his elves back to snipe that uh, Hydralisk den that was so low from before. All right, nice little roaming army from Dark going to pull back. I think it's time for GG. There's not really anything left here for Nightmare anymore. Honestly, I feel like Nightmare put out a pretty strong game. His opening was, was very, very old. It's not something we see much anymore, but did allow him to get... I think that he was in a favorable spot at at least one point in this game. Uh, you know, I think he, he overextended a little bit. His unit comp was a little bit off. Really should have slowly but surely worked into the correct comp. And unfortunately, a bunch of abduct, uh, abducts really ruined his day earlier as well. GG is called. And Dark going to take that one.
By the way, Hero already dispatched Max Packs 2 to 0. So unfortunately, we can't switch to that match. Despite what guy in the chat wants. Who do I think is the biggest up and coming player in Brood War? Up and coming in Brood War means something else than other games. It takes like seven to eight years to come up in Brood War. So what are we talking about? Like what, what time frame do you want? Do you want who I think is going to be really good in ASL in three years or four years or five years? What are we, what are we talking about? Lower rank tournaments, mm, not very often, but sometimes. Three years, so who's gonna be really good in three years? For me personally, my opinion on that. Okay, I think um, Scan, Ride Sky, Ruin. Who do I think from Zerg? HM maybe? I'm, I'm a bit of a Ruin fan. I think Ruin has, has he's going to be really good, I think. All right, we're going into game two. But really, that's this is how long it takes in Brood War, man. Brood War is a different fucking beast. <laughs> All right, Oceanborn. Going to be map number two. In the bottom right, we have Nightmare. In the top left, we have Dark. This is funny. Is Blizzard even going to operate Brood War servers after three years? You know what it was, guys? They said, you know what? 26 years? Yeah, that's right. But we're going to stop after that. The 27th year, we can't do it anymore. It's like, what? <laughs> no, Hups did not beat Special. Special left. Here's the funny thing. If the Brood War server shut down, it would be bad for incoming players because the barrier to get playing is harder. But for players that exist, the experience would be better. For current pros and high-level players, the experience would be better because the Brood War servers are terrible. So things like Fish Server and Shield Battery would actually... They're better than Battle.net. <laughs> but again, the entry uh, is non-existent on those. Yeah, even if they're garbage humans, it still functions better than the Brood War Ladder. So now, we wait, see who's going to play Hero in the finals here. Dark probably going to be able to take it. Well, that's funny. Fish DDoS brain out of existence is crazy. Did I saw a Clem win in Atlanta? Yeah, man, I was there. <laughs> I did saw that. What happens if Stormgate doesn't catch up? StarCraft 2 will live on. Dude, I think Stormgate's going to kill StarCraft 2. I've said this so many times. Maybe not. We'll see. But I, I my professional opinion, if especially if Stormgate keeps going as well as they're going, Imagine having a company that cares about the game that you're playing. What a difference. Imagine people being excited about the game you're playing. That makes a difference to people. Come has pushed Terran further than any other player IMO. I don't even know how to I don't even know how to fucking say anything to that. He stands on the shoulder of giants. All right, Stargate finishes up. Void Ray, yes. <laughs> oh, 
All right, so uh, Void Ray coming out. Now, that's like a very interesting thing. Obviously, he wants to clear Overlords as quickly as possible. Does he follow it up with Glaives? That's something that we did see against sort of. I thought it was a pretty good build. You make it very dark for dark and uh, follow it up with something aggressive. So gets one Overlord. Turns that off. Gonna fly around, look for any more. Obviously, he doesn't know where they are or might be. Uh, Dark immediately pulls back his three forward overlords. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, guy in the chat. Hope you're having a good one. All right, so uh, Oracle coming out now. Second Stargate plus Robo plus Nexus. So it looks very likely that we're going to see that same build uh, as before. Wow, that's kind of surprising. Queen's walking across now. You're going to have to make some serious static D here. We're going to need cannons. We're going to need shield batteries. The forge is about halfway done. I believe he just saw the Queens coming up. This is a tough situation. This is a tough one. I think Dark is is trying to punish right now what Nightmare had going on before. Let's see if we get some Static D up enough in time. Uh, you know, if he starts it all right now, I think he can do it. Here we go. Here we go. So lots of shield batteries. I feel like you want cannons here too, honestly. I don't think the DPS is enough. Like the healing will be good, but your your actual damage output, I do not... No, you're dead. Like Dark's going to get you here. Dark's going to get you. Look, he's got one pile on. Damn, dude. Who does that? Just one fucking pile on powering everything that's important. Yeah, I think that this was, uh, this was a well done counter by Dark. He just kind of uh, figured out this was going to be the same thing just destroying now has enough uh biles there to destroy shield battery right away look it's just gonna bomb through absolutely everything at this point honestly i think the switch into into uh oracles here was wrong as well like you needed to make just so much static d and void rays in my opinion i think that's that was the only way he was gonna have a real chance of holding this and he might not have held it anyways but definitely you can see here he's not even beginning to be close to holding it it's not like no part of this is close. So Dark is going to be able to take this down and go to the finals. Quick second game here against uh, against Nightmare. GG.